This here is an ultra wide from Sony. It is the 1224 f 2.8 G Master, and it's an incredibly expensive lens. And it's also incredible. I mean, look at that front element. It's it's a thing of beauty. However, this isn't about the 1224, although it's going to make some of these images incredible. All of the photos in today's video are edited in my presets. There's a link in the description if you'd like to buy them. I have film presets and I also have 125 plus for desktop and mobile. The objective for today's video is I'm walking from here in North Sydney to the center of Sydney to go and meet my girlfriend who is finishing work. It's a very mundane task and I thought this is a good example to show you that wherever you're going, take your camera with you because there's always something to shoot. There's always something to photograph and I want to prove that point in this video. So let's pick up the camera, let's head outside and see what we can shoot. This is quite a cool spot. This is quite a nice car too. I don't know if we can get a shot with it. But we can have a look. Maybe with the uh, the city in the background. I mean, it's not a, a great shot, but I think for this purpose of this video and just trying to find angles along the way into the center. Now the whole point of this video is I want to show you that it doesn't matter where you're going, what your objective is, you can just take your camera with you and you can get shots along the way which are usable. Now, a good example of that is always try and find lights. Now it doesn't have to be done out of a subject all the time, you can just go for like an atmospheric kind of environmental shot. Just going to get that nice center frame, get down a bit, angle it up slightly, we're at 24 mil. Change that to about 16 mil, 80th of a second, f2.8 ISO 2050. But again, it's a lovely simplistic shot. And coming down into this kind of like walkway, it might be a nice kind of kind of vibe with that light. I mean, it would be helpful if somebody walked around the corner. But as you can see, it's quite a vibe. If I can push a bit closer, go wide. I think you'll agree, if there was uh, somebody in that frame, it would look really sick. Especially with that light, it gives that like kind of cinematic vibe. But it's about finding those frames, and now because I've taken that shot, every time I walk this path, I'll be thinking about that frame. And that's why it's really good for you to just go out and shoot, and you'll realise there's frames pretty much everywhere you walk. Okay, coming up to this bit, you can see it's quite cinematic actually, it looks really nice. Again, it'd be perfect with a model, or a subject, or even a car parked there. They're really nice. So I actually think this location would be really good for a car. Just like pop in the car just here. As you can see, you've got like the, na the night coming down, but the light's actually hidden because of the overpass. And then you've got kind of like a nice light above, but it works really well and would be perfect with like a, a car or something parked in there. It looks really sick. If I can kind of get the light coming through the trees as well. It's really nice. I don't know if I got that then, because my camera... Oh yeah, we got one. My camera was like... It's because I had my finger accidentally on the uh, the side button, on the, the lens. So <laughs> it wasn't pulling focus, I was like, oh, please take a photo. But that was nice, it was good timing. We had somebody walking through the frame, which obviously helps tell the story of the photo. Just that little bit extra. Okay, so walking down here, we're walking towards the train station as well, might be a good shot. Nice ATM shot. make that look cinematic in post. Okay, coming up the stairs, we can maybe get like a nice... Maybe we use the leading line. Okay, so I've made it up onto the bridge. Got two people in front of me, which is uh, quite a good shot. I come over to the left. Just wait for the other two people to go through the frame. So the super wide really looks good there, like because it just accentuates the like the shot that I'm trying to get. Now I am coming onto the bridge, and up at like up in a minute, basically I'm going to try and get a panning shot through the fence of maybe a bus or a train. Just push on a bit further onto the bridge. Just want to get this nice wide angle shot here. 
again, would look really good if you were walking through the frame. I think they might be too far now. I kind of wanted them to be in the, the middle of the frame. Kind of, uh, I mean, uh, we'll work what we got. You can see the idea there. It does kind of work. Got some work on the, the harbour bridge going on, which is all the noise is, so I do apologise for that. Got to get a shot of this, actually, because it's not every day you get to see it. Pretty cool. Sick. Now further down, like halfway down the, the harbour bridge, there is, which you might have seen on another video, there's like a cutout where they've opened up the, uh, the grid and you can actually use it as a frame for the Opera House. So I'm going to do that. Got a nice shot there of a matey security guard on his phone. Uh, maybe 24 mil, get a nice uh, architectural shot of the, uh, the bridge. That is loud, bro. Jeez. So 24 mil, we're going to do a bit of a look up just of the uh, the, the uh, Harbour Bridge. If I go kind of centre here, let's go here and do a little bit of a look up shot. We get a little bit of the light in there, which I don't know if I like that much. But it's about just taking photos, being out and walking. So whether or not the photos are good or not, I'm going to show you. Because I want to show that not every single photo you take is going to be perfect so here's probably a good place to do a panning shot let's see if we can get the settings nice and quick 40 of a second bus going through the frame now the reason here's good is because there's actually a gap in between these two fences uh, so maybe i can get the taxi going through the frame i need to just put actually i'm going to tap to focus and then wait for another bus or cool car to go through the frame Okay, we've got a bus coming from the left-hand side, which is good. Hopefully it doesn't have too much traffic on the right-hand side. We've got it on centre focus. And we're just going to pan with the bus. And I'm sure one of them looks actually sick, because I'm happy with that. Now, a good little tip for panning shots. Um, it is easier to take panning shots in landscape than in portrait. Because with portrait, obviously you have a narrow, narrower field of view whereas when you have landscape nice and wide uh, and then you can crop it as you wish but i would always say try and take some panning shots nice and wide because it might give you a better result we'll go 15th of a second drop that iso down tap to focus i was uh, at 12 mil then so i may have got something i may not have got something who knows I was hoping that this bit would be open because normally this bit right here is open as well so you can get some really cool wide angle panning shots maybe i can do it with the cars going through that center frame there we'll just wait for a taxi or i don't know if there's a bus but there is a taxi going through the frame now we will try one in portrait oh it was too slow i don't know if i got that because i was going way too slow because i didn't tap to focus oh uh, we do have a bus going through we're at 12 mil We've tapped the focus in the center of the frame. We're gonna wait for the bus to go through and we're just gonna track it all the way through like this. That was amazing. You didn't take a shot. I don't know why. Why didn't you take a shot camera? That was very frustrating because it was trying to pull focus on this. Now, what you can do, switch it into manual focus, pull focus where the car is going to be, which is roughly about there. And then you don't have to worry about that pesky autofocus trying to focus on a fence instead of the shot that you're trying to take so now i could just do this and it's in frame and i could just do that and it's in focus he says without looking and hoping to god it is in focus but let's just get this one all confidently and we'll walk off it's on the screen i'm not going to look at it i know it's, i've nailed it absolutely nailed it it looks tremendous but there is a train going through ah can i get there in time okay i made it back 24 mil is there anybody on there we'll get a couple oh the wrong focus I pull focus manually. We'll get one in landscape too. Get the back of it. Okay, there we go. Speed photography with Sam. There we go. Boshed it out. Looking sick. This yellow marker here signifies the center of the bridge. So we can uh, change the settings back. We're going to put it back into uh, good old autofocus. 
and we're going to go to 80th of a second ISO 1006 because we could probably do the rest in post now we'll go we'll go a bit higher we'll go 2000 oh that is oh that is wide Jeez, I haven't taken this shot yet on a, on a 12 mil. That's incredible. It's almost, arguably, too wide. Can I get the city in that? Oh, I think I can. Because it's so wide, that's actually incredible. Oh, that is, that's pretty sick. I'm gonna throw manual focus on. I'm gonna manual focus onto the city so the good old city in the background is all in focus. I'm going to get a nice little split tone. Bridge on the right. Cityscape on the left, poking through. Don't know, let me know in the comments, does that work? I mean, I think it does. But it's obviously your opinion that matters the most to me. Let me know. Okay, so there's a really cool frame here that I'm going to get. There's a car coming towards me. We've got a nice arch. We're going to go center frame of the arch. I've got the camera nice and stable, and we're just going to get a shot of the car going through the frame. We're at 0.4 of a second. So there's a shot here with this like neon sign, which is obviously like for this football pitch, which is quite nice. We're going to tap to focus on that. We're going to go ISO. Oh, it is dark here. We're going to take one shot with it focused on the metal thing in front of me, the metal grid. And then we're going to take one shot in manual focus, pulling focus onto the sign itself, and then getting that. The two shots, one with it focused on the fence that you can see, and one with it focused on the sign, which gives me two different types of photos. Okay, so we've got a shot here. There's a dude coming up towards me. I'm thinking I can go here, 12. Maybe not 12, we'll go hundredth of a second we're at 18 mil 2500 of a second sorry 2500 ISO f2.8 hundredth of a second okay so we're gonna get one more panning shot and I think we'll call it a day maybe the dude on the bike 24 mil I mean that was uh, a big ask because I was <laughs> not really prepared but oh my god that is clean we will, uh, we will take that. And I think on that note, on that high note, we're going to go and have a look at the hashtag Optical Wonder over on Instagram, where you can show me the content you're creating and in turn inspire me and inspire others around the world. Now that super wide look is obviously, it's a personal preference. Some people enjoy it, some people don't. I personally really enjoy it. It's incredible for cityscape, landscape stuff, especially those lookup shots because you get that dramatic image without having to do any stitching. Now, I will be taking this out into the outback in Australia to do some low light star photography with it in the coming month. Fingers crossed I can get a car so I can go out and do that because it's something that I really, really miss and I want to do more of. Now, if you want to see that, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so you get notified when I do upload that video. We're going to have a look at the hashtag OpticalWonder over on Instagram, where you can show me the content you're creating, and in turn inspire me and inspire others around the world. Okay, we have thrown a screen record on, and we are up to 615,000 posts on the hashtag. And on the top page, I will go to the recent page in just a moment. This photo caught my eye, and I really liked it. And also this one did, and I liked the photo, the colors in this first image. We're gonna to go to the most recent, and we're gonna scroll down from there. Okay, so we'll go with this street shot here, which is really nice, I love the colors, really simplistic, and a nice color grade. Going down from there, we'll pick this simplistic one, which is really nice, that's in Iceland. What a great shot. And we'll do two more, we'll go with this double exposure, kind of reflection, double exposure kind of shot with the black and white vibe, which I love. Uh, this one here, which is really nice. I love how you've used the buildings to frame the other building, which is fantastic. And we'll do two more. We'll go with this one, which is a portrait shot. And then this one here as well, which is really nice. I love the contrast between the highlights and the shadows. If you do want to get featured, you just throw the hashtag optical wonder in your caption when you upload to Instagram, and I will get a chance to view it on here. With all that being said, create more, stress less, go out, go shoot. And wherever you're going, take that camera with you and take some photos. Now, if you've made it this far, this is like the end of the video. Uh, I appreciate it. Maybe subscribe if you've lasted this long. I want to just say that I am working on a photography course where I'm gonna be running through from the absolute basics 
all the way through to editing and all in one course it's if there's a lot of work that i'm putting into it and it's going to take probably a month or two or three to put it together but it will be coming out in the next couple of months few months time now this course will be incredibly affordable and it's probably going to be the best value for money that i've ever created so if you are interested in that make sure you subscribe and stick around so you get notified when i do release that because it's going to be my most affordable product that i've ever released and i'm excited